Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. It's a great day to be a tiger or perhaps a penguin. But we are happy that you're here. And for all of you that are um, at home or in your offices visiting via live stream, that's great too. Thanks for taking time to make a good personal decision for you. Really excited to be here. And I hope you had a great break with your families and your friends and are rejuvenated and ready to start just another excellent semester. So our agenda today, always we want to welcome and congratulate new faculty and staff and those who've got promotions. We'll look at our fall accolades, a strategic plan update, legislature is in session, China partnerships and international reorganization, a recap of fall administrative decisions, journey campaign, commencement save the date, what's going on with facilities these days, and again, we always save the best for last, our awards. So right now, I'd like to ask anyone who has been hired or promoted since August convocation, will you please stand for a warm tiger welcome and round of congratulations. We are thrilled you're here and very proud for those of you who have been promoted. I really want to thank all of you to continuing to drive our mission. I see our mission in action across this campus every single day. Each convocation, I like to pause, as you are well aware, to celebrate just a few of our points of pride from the last semester. So here's a short video. During this past semester, there were so many excellent examples of our progress and our excellence, as there always are. Here's just a few.
I really want to thank everyone, not only those that made the video, but there were so many other things and people to celebrate. So thank you to all of you for your consistent dedication and excellence. Our strategic plan is the investment of our collective energies and resources to drive our mission. I want to thank everyone on the strategic planning committee for continuing to lead this very important work. Our goal team co-chairs have been meeting monthly throughout the fall semester. And as you are aware, an update was sent in November so be watching for additional updates throughout this semester as year one initiatives continue to unfold and as we begin the selection process for year two initiatives. Also, please be reminded that the summary information of our strategic plan is on the website, but the detailed information is on the end drive, the same place you go for the cabinet minutes. So if you're looking for more detailed information, please go to the end drive. Will the members of the Strategic Plan Steering Committee please stand so we can recognize you for all your great work. So a quick overview of the 1920 strategies. Our academic excellence team members have been working toward implementing an alternative assessment platform, establishing a working definition of professional development, and developing asynchronous workshops. Will all of the colleagues working on these strategies please stand to be recognized? Ford movement on the student success goal began with the hiring of Trey Giles to help us improve on-campus student persistence. And thanks to the work of many, we have made great strides in uploading the academic program plans into Workday. Will all of the colleagues working on these strategies please stand to be recognized? There has been an enormous amount of work in progress on our strategic growth initiatives. We've been invested in some new technology, including a chat bot to enhance student recruitment. A recruitment success coach is helping us drive the enrollment of online and military students. You know about our redesigned scholarship program announced last fall. A very special shout out to the foundation and our donors for providing an additional $40,000 to support the new scholarship program. And we have also designed strategies to expand both the recruitment and the retention of our online students. Will all colleagues working on these strategies please stand to be recognized? We've also made an investment in our internship program, our moving forward with an esports program, funded strategies to enhance the recruitment of Hispanic and international students, and are designing strategies specifically to reduce summer melt, which simply means we lose students over the summer who have previously committed to us. Will all colleagues working on these strategies please stand to be recognized? In terms of academic programs, we have identified first priorities in athletic training to drive our on-campus students. While well, efforts to grow our online student enrollment will feature a new MS in computer science, a BA in history, 
a BS in com computer science, RN to BSN, a BSW in social work, and short classes, courses. Will all colleagues working on these strategies please stand to be recognized? And finally, during our strategic planning session, we heard from you that strategic growth must address human capital needs up front. Therefore, our plan continues to support our Move to Market initiative, which was an additional $500,000 investment this year, as well as an annual spring review process to examine and address compression and equity outside of the Move to Market initiative and ensures that new strategies are funded forward. Goal four keeps us focused on managing our resources to keep pace with our growth. Or as Will Rogers once said, even if you're on the right track, you will get run over if you just sit there. I do want to pause to note that you'll be seeing information shortly on our process to determine merit raises as well as tuition rates for the next academic year. And finally, goal four addresses campus infrastructure needs with first steps focused on beginning the process to revise the campus master plan, keeping campus maintenance a priority, and refreshing our continuity of operation plans. Will all colleagues working on these strategies please stand to be recognized? Goal five. Goal five keeps us focused on our mission to develop engaged global citizen leaders. Year one initiatives begin with aligning the Kansas Board of Regents new strategic plan, which will focus on economic prosperity. In other words, demonstrating that our communities are better simply because we exist. With our longstanding excellent work as serving as stewards of place. Easy for ha Fort Hayes State, right? Not only do our highly skilled alumni excel in their chosen fields, but think about the impact that we are making our, in our communities through the Herndon Clinic, the Small Business Development Center, the Neuromuscular Wellness Center, Transition to Teaching, the Management Development Center, the Docking Institute, the Center for Civic Leadership, and many, many more examples throughout this university. Heck, our students even helped to build the Hayes Downtown Pavilion. I am really excited and look forward to the Kansas Board of Regents strategic plan shining a light on what have we, we have been very good at for a very long time, making our communities better. I'm also very excited to see progress being made toward reclaiming our previously held designation as a Carnegie Community Engagement University. Will all colleagues working on these strategies please stand to be recognized? I also want to recognize and thank all of our colleagues who are spending some time working on our strategies and researching areas to advance our goals for the coming years. Improving our uh, new student transition process, expanding our use of artificial intelligence to improve student learning, a relentless, relentless pursuit of the best academic advising model, and building on Gold 5, deep thinking on the institutionalization of the intersection of civic engagement and learning. 
Will all colleagues working on these strategies please stand to be recognized? During the spring, while work continues on year one strategies, Jill and Brett will lead the campus through a process to refresh and reshape strategies in preparation for the addition of year two initiatives. Later today, you will receive an email with an idea form link and additional strategic goal information. The form will be open for one month. Any questions about the process should be directed to Jill and to Brett. In April, we'll also take time to assess our progress on year one strategies to determine the, effect, uh, the efficacy thus far and to then to make decisions regarding completion, further investment, or reallocation. Thank you so much for your continued engagement in this very important process. Now, we're just beginning the legislative process, and I want to provide you with a quick update and remind you over and over again, it is a process, or as the Beatles said, a long and winding road. Later today, I will share with you via email a memo from the Kansas Board of Regents staff on the governor's budget recommendations for post-secondary education. For now, her budget includes $11.9 million for Kansas Board of Regents. Assuming there are no changes by the Kansas Board of Regents to the funding formula, the Fort Hayes portion of that $11.9 million would be approximately $679,000. She put in $5 million for need-based aid. This is a pool of money, which will be divided among the universities based on a formula. Then that money has to be matched by new scholarship contributions to our foundation to even access the money. You may have heard there is a 2.5 increase for employees, for state employees. However, the governor has stated that she excluded state universities from her pay plan in lieu of honoring the block grant concept requested by the board. So the board requested $50 million for the region institutions and that's the $11.9 million that she funded. Just to know, a two and a half increase at Fort Hayes for all of our employees would cost us about $1.4 million. Some takeaways. The governor included us in her budget. Some money is better than no money, and we're grateful for that. It's only the beginning of the legislative process, and if you recall last year, a lot happened in the middle, and we did very well. Hopefully, we'll get some money in for our state employees, but regardless, I want to remind you, we have a budget process to determine merit. So the governor is not going to dictate whether or not you get merit. We will use our process. So don't think about or worry about the 2.5%. I don't know what we're going to be able to do at this point. It depends on a number of things, including our spring enrollment numbers, as well as tuition setting um, processes and actually what we'll be allowed to do and not do and what we determine to do. It's a process. I've got a lot of optimism, but I wanted to give you what the update is thus far. As we start transitioning and thinking about our China partnerships and our international update, I want to begin by thanking the many people across this institution that have been involved in the preparation of the materials for the Ministry of Education visit in China. That was a lot, a lot of work and a lot of documentation. 
So if you've been involved in preparation of the MOE documents for CIOS University, will you please stand for a round of gratitude applause? We continue to work through not only the China partnership challenges and the opportunities, but also our overall international structure with a focus on our desired outcome. We then developed, oh, there we go. This past fall, focusing on our guiding principles, the executive team interviewed key staff members and then reviewed and re-reviewed and re-reviewed all other reports and materials that we've had to date. We then developed five focus areas and established benchmarks and resources for each area. We are currently finalizing our draft plan, which will be shared first with those who are directly engaged in international education and for, for the very first round of feedback and adjustment. And then that report will be shared with the campus community for open comment, which keeps us on schedule. This is the same slide that you saw in August. So thank you very much for your participation and your thoughtfulness and helping us move forward with our global strategy. So this fall, we adopted 10 policies. I really want to pause to thank Karen Allen for her consistency and her timeliness in notifying both the cabinet and all of you when the agendas were posted and also the summary notes all on the end drive so that we could keep you informed. Colleagues, thank you very much for reviewing the documents and remaining engaged in decisions and discussions. Once again, we also rescinded some policies. And several other decisions were made. Financial decisions included new course fees for students in education and in social work, and position expansion for Sternberg and the Mar uh, Makerspace program. We're also moving forward for, on the transition to FHSU online. And it was our very distinct pleasure to thank you for your dedication and your hard work with an extra day off over the holidays. Upon recommendation of the faculty, Senate, and the staff Senate, we supported the student government's request to cancel afternoon classes in support of the big event in April. Cannot say it enough. Every gift matters. Isn't this completely outstanding? Round of applause. Yay. Thank you very much for your generosity. I also want to take a, me a moment to thank our donors who have provided funding for the President's Strategic Initiatives Fund, specifically tying brand new philanthropy to our strategic plan. The first expenditure from this fund will be an allocation of $8,500 to fund the gap between federal military tuition assistance and the Fort Hayes State University online graduate degree tuition for either an MBA or a DNP. I also want to thank you for participating in the first ever winter commencement. I thought it was fantastic. I appreciated everybody's energies. And I really want to thank you also for inspiring our students along their way so they have the opportunity to walk across that stage. In just a blink and with some warm weather, it'll be time for our spring commencement. Our success continues to focus on people, 
programs, and place. I want to pause to express my deep gratitude to all of our facility staff who keep the heat working, show up in the cold early mornings to clear our sidewalks, and also keep our buildings clean. Our facility staff are also working hard at building improvements. So let's take a moment to review what happened this fall and what we're going to look forward to in the spring. This fall, the Memorial Union completed renovations to restrooms and the ballroom. We celebrated a fantastic opening of the Schmidt Foundation Center for Art and Design. Completed restroom additions to Lewis Field and boiler replacement for the Acres Energy Center. And we repaired the pavement for Dwight and Lewis Drives. This spring, you will see construction begin on the Fishley Wills Center for Student Success. I know that is so exciting. Rarick renovation is moving forward. Roof repairs will be happening to Albertson Hall, as well as the Gross Coliseum. A chiller replacement at Sternberg. And masonry cleaning, cleaning and sealing for Sheridan. Whoops, whoops, that's no surprise now, is it? <laughs> <clears throat> At this time, our fantastic provost, Dr. Jill Arensdorf, will join me and improve your programming. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Mason. Good morning, it's my pleasure to make the presentation of the Faculty Semester Awards, the College Adjunct Faculty Awards, and the Distinguished Service Awards. We will begin with the Faculty Semester Awards. Each semester, as you probably know, three Fort Hayes State University faculty are selected to receive the awards for outstanding teaching, outstanding scholarly activity, and outstanding service. With the generosity and support of Commerce Bank, these three individuals to, that we're recognizing today are provided an award of $500 in recognition of their efforts. In addition to the monetary award, the deans are providing an additional $250 in the budget of the recipient's department. Although a Commerce Bank representative was unable to be here today, we greatly appreciate their ongoing support as well as the dean's support for these awards. I am pleased to announce the fall 2000, 2019 award winners today. When each recipient is announced, please come forward to be recognized and receive your award. And we've had a sneak peek of the first one. The Outstanding Teaching Award for Fall 2019 goes to Dr. Robert Lloyd, Assistant Professor of Management. The Fall 2019 Outstanding Scholarly Activity Award is also from the Department of Management, an Associate Professor of Management and the Robbins College of Business and Entrepreneurship International Coordinator, Dr. Babu George. And the Outstanding Service Award recipient is Dr. Seth Castle, Assistant Professor of Leadership Studies.
congratulations again to these three award winners, Robert, Babu, and Seth, and thank you for your continued commitment to our students and the university. We are again appreciative of Commerce Bank's continued support of our faculty and Fort Hayes State University. So in addition to the semester awards, we are going to be recognizing our adjunct faculty members today. The adjunct faculty recognition program was developed to honor adjunct faculty at Fort Hayes who provide outstanding teaching and learning opportunities for our students. We appreciate the outstanding efforts of each of our adjunct faculty. Each year, the university recognizes one exceptional adjunct faculty member from each of the five academic colleges with a $500 award and recognition at this convocation. The funding for this year's awards is provided by the Teaching Innovation and Learning Technologies Office. Thank you, Dr. Andrew Feldstein and his team for supporting our adjunct faculty with these awards. We are going to be recognizing these individuals today and sending their certificates and awards directly to them. I don't believe any of the five are able to join us today. However, if you are in the audience, please come forward to be recognized. Um, I'd ask that you hold your applause until all are announced. So first, representing the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, we have Ms. T.J. Riley from the Department of Philosophy. Dr. Stacy Seibel from the Department of Economics, Finance, and Accounting in the Robbins College of Business and Entrepreneurship. Ms. Julie Canizo from the Department of Advanced Education Programs in the College of Education. Representing the College of Health and Behavioral Sciences, Mr. Darren Chalicom from the Department of Psychology. And Mr. Eamon Cavini, who is a member of the Department of Geosciences in the Worth College of Science, Technology, and Mathematics. Let's applaud for these fine individuals. Thank you all for your commitment to students and the university. Now we'll move on to the Distinguished Service Awards. Each year, the Distinguished Service Award process recognizes two staff members, one USS and one UPS, for their continued excellent service to the university. These awards are based on three general areas, longevity in a of a minimum of five years, breadth of high quality contributions, and significance of their dedication and commitment to the university each award recipient will receive $500. So when I, when I announce who the winner is, if you'd come to stage to receive your certificate and award. It is my pleasure to announce this year's UPS Distinguished Service Award recipient, Ms. Rebecca Luters. Rebecca, if you're here, come forward. to tell you a little bit about her nomination. Rebecca has worked in the Fort Hayes State University print shop for 20 years. In her work, she makes it her mission to ensure that every project that goes out from the print shop gives the best impression possible of Fort Hayes State University. Rebecca works on all types of projects ranging from the commencement program to the High Plains Music Camp, excuse me, High Plains Music Camp materials to the program book for rodeo. Rebecca also brings a very special kind of expertise to Western Kansas through the art of sign language interpreting. She provides this service for Fort Hayes State University at several events, such as commencement, and anywhere in Western Kansas where interpreting services are needed. Again, congratulations, Rebecca. It is also my distinct pleasure to announce this year's recipient of the USS Distinguished Service Award, and that award goes to Ms. Eileen Roberts. Eileen has a genuine dedication, love, and passion for Fort Hayes State University and the students we serve. Eileen is a friendly person who instantly puts others at ease. 
faculty and staff feel comfortable seeking guidance and answers from her. It is typical for both current and previous employees to stop by and thank her for her excellent customer service she provides to each and every one of them. Her experience and knowledge brings employees to her door for assistance, but most importantly, her human connection brings individuals back. Eileen has served Fort Hayes State University over 41 years and always with a smile. Congratulations, Eileen. And now I would like to recognize the Les and Elizabeth Griffin family Outstanding Service Award recipients. These awards recognize the exceptional and dedicated staff who support the daily operations at Fort Hayes State University. Employees nominated for this award exhibit a strong commitment to excellence and display pride and dedication to their work. Each staff winner receives $500 and each student winner receives $250. I would ask Dr. Ken Griffin to come forward and assist in presenting these awards. Thank you for your support of these awards, Dr. Griffin and Marsha. So it is my pleasure to announce the recipient of the Griffin Family Outstanding Service Award for Facility Operations Staff, and that recipient is Mr. Martin Jimenez. <laughs> Martine is unable to join us today, however, please allow me to provide just a bit of information about Martine and his qualifications for receiving the award. Martine serves Pick and Hall. His staff and Pickin were honored to nominate Martine for his lively hellos and friendly handshakes. He is always courteous to staff, students, and visitors in Pickin Hall. Martine's guide, kindness is unsurpassed. His commitment to success, pride in his work, and positive attitude reinforces all that Fort Hayes State University stands for. Again, congratulations to Martine. Mr. Alberto Jimenez is the recipient of the Griffin Family Outstanding Service Award for Facility Operations Students. <laughs> Alberto is a student employee in the Fort Hayes State University Motor Pool. He's a junior, majoring in computer science, and a member of the Fort Hayes State University soccer team. Motor Pool Director Dwayne Weigel rep describes Alberto as a go-getter and someone who loves to keep busy every day. They're very proud to have him on their team. <laughs> the recipient for the Griffin Family Outstanding Food Service Staff Award goes to Ms. Jolene Kaufman. Jolene, would you please join us on stage? <laughs> Jolene demonstrates outstanding service and commitment to excellence for Fort Hayes State students, faculty, and staff. She has been a part of Chartwell's team for over six years and has proven herself to be a truly caring and dedicated employee. She is the person that can, quote, make things happen and offers a tremendous amount of support and leadership to other Chartwell staff. Congratulations, Jolene. <laughs> the last award to be presented today is the recipient for the Griffin Family Outstanding Food Service student and goes to Ms. Madison Walls. Madison, unfortunately, is not able to join us today, but here's a little information about her. Maddie has been with Chartwells for two years while attending Fort Hayes State University. She's a very dependable and hard worker. And I'm sure many of you have seen her in the union because Maddie serves as a barista at Starbucks. Her presence makes the atmosphere very enjoyable. Congratulations, Maddie. <laughs> and 
And again, congratulations to all of the staff award recipients and a special thank you to Dr. Ken Griffin for his continued support of our staff and assisting in recognizing these individuals' hard work and dedication to the university. Thank you. I will turn the program back over to President Mason. Thank you so much. I just love the opportunity to say thank you to the excellence that's throughout this institution. I want you to know that following this convocation, a copy of the PowerPoint will be archived on the website under the Office of the President, should you want to reference any of the slides. A special shout out. There's lots of people who help me with this presentation. Trust me, it takes a village. So a few to mention. Luke LeCount, Matthias Carter, Kelsey Stramel, Cindy Klein, Tommy Williams, the President's Office staff, and members of the executive and senior leadership teams for helping put everything together. I also want you to know that I remain very inspired by each and every one of you every day. It's such a joy to come to work. It's a pleasure, it's a, an honor to visit with our legislators, our regents, and the public about your extraordinary results. We are constantly being thanked and looked to as a role model from both the regions and from the legislators. We have much to celebrate. And I want you to know that I well recognize that our accomplishments are the result and the dedication of many, not just a few. I'm so very proud of the work that you're doing and the impact that you have, particularly on our students and also on our communities. And now there is a reception waiting for us out in the front lobby. Uh, I hope you'll stay for just a few minutes to continue to greet one another and especially welcome our newest members of Tiger family. Go Tigers, you're outstanding. I'm excited about this year. Thank you very much for joining us today. Take care.